Mornings with Doze and Producer Debbie, the MMA Junkie Radio Pre-Show. Hey, why do we still say the sky's the limit? We've been to space. I guess because space is the limit doesn't roll off the tongue as easily. Snakes be slither. You should say kittens be meowing. It still works. Cats be meowing. Wait a minute. You mean I gotta listen to this crap before the real show? Get out of here! Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, July 4th, 2017, or as some people refer to it, the 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Yeah, happy 4th of July, everybody. Go out and have some fun, barbecue, blow shit up, be with your friends, be with your family, have a good time, and feel blessed that you live in this great country. And if you are in the New York or Northern Jersey area, invite me to your barbecue after I get off. After you get off? <laughs> I said it really weird. I couldn't help it. <laughs> you mixed I out and, w- and off, huh? I kind of think I said uh You said like Alf. Alf. <laughs> I think I said Alf. Alien life form Alf is what you mean. <laughs> after he gets Alfie. Just uh, hit him up and invite him to a barbecue. <laughs> We're going to start today's uh, pre-show a little bit early, earlier because I've been having a few weird issues. What is going on? This Oh, my God. This girl is walking by. And uh, where our studio is located is Mandalay Bay. And there's this little hallway that connects Mandalay Bay and the Delano. So we see a lot of walk of shames and stuff right here. It's pretty funny. But uh, we also see people with their rafts. And this girl has a raft that looks like a regular inner tube, but on top of it is attached an even bigger raft that's a diamond. So it looks like a diamond ring. And she's trying to carry it because it it seems really (laughs) awkward. (laughs) And her boyfriend is just bumping his ass into her. And every time he does it, she almost falls down. And he did it like three (laughs) or four times. I think he just wants her to fall. And she hasn't figured that out yet because she just keeps giving him like the, hey, look. Type thing like, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, uh, Danny, so American Idiot is in a lot of these. So I don't know, man. Hey, you know, Simon and Garfunkel do America. We're trying to figure out. Today we're doing we like all American songs. We only need, we need two more songs. And we, we um, already have a version of America. Actually, we have two versions of America in this. You know, <laughs> you know Sammy the Squid, our buddy? Mm-hmm. One time we offered him, I mean, granted, we weren't going to do this, but we offered him money to change his name just to America for one year. So he he's not America Espinosa. He's just America. He's <laughs> like Prince. Just and America. I want to say the number was not as high as you would think. Like, I think he would do it, I think it was like 30000 for for two two years or something like that yeah i thought you said one year no i think it was, it was more than that because i just remember thinking wow we could actually maybe raise this and make you america uh demi lovato has a song it's called made in the usa i don't know what it sounds like uh rock in the usa by john now he's not cougar mellencamp he's just john mellencamp rock in the oh living in america dude james brown that we got to do that. Is it? I'll just switch up the game for now. You were going to ask if it's living or living, huh? Yeah. But you thought that might actually be racist, so you backed off, didn't you? No, actually, I really did just stop. <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> don't lie, don't lie. <laughs> Today's show... We have three guests. We were going to have four. Four? Four? Damn. But we're going to go with three. Michael Johnson, Tisha Torres, and Mark DeCisi. They will all join us on the program. There will be pockets for phone calls, so get in the queue. Give us a call. Tell us what you're up to, 4th of July. A lot of people probably don't even know that we have a show today. We're the only numbskulls on live. 866-522-2846. You know, Danny, I'm not sure that I know the number by heart. 866-522-2846. I think sometimes they say 520. I do think that sometimes you say it wrong. 
I think you asked me one time, and I was like, that's way off. Have you ever known something, and then you psych yourself out of it so much that you... Oh, you, absolutely. You, uh, you tend you didn't even to... You finish the sentence. I agree. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even know where I was... <laughs> how to finish the sentence, so you bailed me out. <laughs> no, but I, I, I do that almost... Because you know what my new work schedule is, right? Like, my mm. we're, we're up in uh, less than a minute. But uh, my new work schedule is I, I get up at 5 o'clock every morning. So sometimes it's just out of, like, exhaustion that I forget that I double-check something. Um, I have to make sure that all of our breaks are accounted for. Like, not while we're doing them, but later on in the system, I have to make sure that the system registered that we took breaks. And so sometimes I double and tri triple-check those because I, I go, were there three there or were there only two? I'm just crossing T's and dying mouths. Yeah. All right, we are coming up in 10, though. This is going to be interesting. No George joke? knows we're doing a show today, right? I don't know. Say bye. It's the Danny and Go Show. This is your captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McCarran Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is going to be a little bit bumpy. <laughs> All right, Junkie Nation, it's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Gold. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long, we roll it! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio Revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communications stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology. MMA Junkie Radio. Commence transmission. Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world. Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Goes. From the fight capital of the world, inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, is the devious and dastardly Goes. Our ace co-host and back east handling all the producing duties. It's going to be Danny. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Happy birthday, America. Oh, nice shorts. Thank you. You look like Dan Henderson. Did you just oh buy yeah? those? Does that say MMA Junkie Radio on it? Yeah. I don't know if it does. All right. Yeah, it does. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to put a snap that says, uh, we never stop. But then I realized we took three days off last week, so that would have been dumb. Not but okay, those were the anyway. first, uh, well, were they the first days off? We, we, we actually, first couple here here's what now. happened. We took two days off to go to Virginia for to visit the military. But I felt like we were working there. And... Um, I got sick one day. You were sick, but I was here, right? I believe so. And then I was in New York, but you were here. So there you go. I, I really don't feel like uh, other than those three days, we were off much. That's for sure. But here we are. And I think, don't quote me, we're like 20 shows away from the real 2,500 shows. So pretty stoked about that. Do we need to step it up in order to make that mark by? Those three days cost us. Because those three days had us on perfect, the mark right? for 2,500 being... The Friday before oh. UFC 214. So how do we make up for these? Three primetime shows. Okay. Or weekend shows or afternoon shows or midnight shows. I don't know. Let's think of something creative to make it up. But wouldn't you like that to be in Orange County? I would, yeah. Makes sense. That's where we started. Yeah. In a kitchen in Santa Ana, California. So... Maybe we can do it in a kitchen in Tustin, California, or uh, in a hotel room in Cerritos, California. Cerritos? Yeah. I'm hearing the fighters are going to be in, in that area. Oh. Why? I don't know. There's so many <laughs> hotels in Anaheim, but it's summer, so it could be that. Disneyland and all that. Yeah, it could be that Disneyland and, and 
Knott's, well, no, Knott's, not Knott's Berry Farm, but just, I, I guess, Disneyland. I haven't been to Knott's Berry Farm in is, ages. It's a tough hotel to score. Who knows? But, you know, the UFC comes with that big credit card and says, hey, man, we need, uh, how many rooms do you think they need? There's about 24 fighters. And then each corner man, I believe, also gets their room. So there's 50. And the, the UFC staff. The I, I thought, thought so. Share. I think they, I thought they got two rooms, but like, all right, yeah, and let's just let's just pad it a little. Let's just say the corner man I, does. I was gonna say fifty. And fifty, and then I was gonna say hundred rooms. Really? Yeah, because the uh, the people that come to support, you know, like Burt Watson's crew, Burt mm -hmm. and his crew was like six or seven. Yeah, but like those the are the ones that, that are just up, shuttling. That put up the cage and all that. Aren't aren't they just like local guys? Mm, I think the UFC probably has their own dudes by now. Oh wow! Yeah, the videographers. Yeah, photographers, yeah, huh? wow, the staff that supports. So they all travel. So I would say let's just call that 50 and 50 in talent. Then you got uh, 100 rooms. Maybe maybe they save one in case um, Josie Aldo wants to fly in. You know, they probably have like 10 on hold. Mm -hmm. And here's a number I heard a while back. It takes $1.5 million to throw a proper show. So this is the average show. Don't include like Connor and Jose on a private jet. Yeah, that's a whole different budget there. I'm talking about most pay-per-views between the billboards and the advertising that they do. Um the all the travel, the cost of production. 1.5 million is what it costs to throw a show, a UFC show. And like I here's what I don't know. I I don't know. I, I imagine that's pay-per-view, maybe Big Fox as well. And anything they recoup from that and get beyond that is obviously a profit. So even on the shows where they used to make 300,000 buys, they're still making a profit. Mm -hmm. It's just not as good as the one that sells $1 million. Because that's obviously, like I guess, the equivalent of throwing three shows, maybe four shows. This is something we heard about three years ago? No, right? I heard that one about s five, six years ago. Okay, so yeah, things have probably changed, right? Like, uh, so like Oklahoma City? Like running an arena, stuff like I that. I think they had like 800,000 gate or something. When you hear like well, 800,000 gate or whatever. And plus salaries have gone up, then... Um, Maybe that number goes up slightly as well. 500,000 maybe? 500,000 what? The number goes up? What'd you say, 1.5? Yeah, maybe, maybe it's two. two. Right. That's a pay-per-view show. Now, Oklahoma City, I don't think they would have as much advertising, as much of a push. They would basically focus on two headliners and say, Kiesa, Kevin Lee, get out there, do things. But um, So that might be a smaller budget. But I believe the pay-per-view budget was about $1.5 million. And then anything after that was a profit. And, of course, some profits were just bigger. Uh, much like if you work at a Foot Locker and you guys had a seven thousand dollar day and everyone's great and boss is happy, and then all of a sudden you come across a, a fifteen thousand dollar day, maybe on Black Friday or something, uh, then obviously that's huge. Whoa, we wish we had we had a bunch of these throughout the year. Same thing. Um, there was there was a fight night that had high salaries. And you could just tell that fight night probably was a loser for them. I think Dana even pointed out, I think it had to do with Cerrone. He wanted more money or something. He goes, dude, we just paid you like 300 Gs. The gate was 900. So I leave 600,000 for the rest and then all of our expenses. And I think he was implying that, you know, there may have been a loss. Of course, you know, now they got the fight pass. They got the TV contracts. They got so many other things going on. But if you just treat a show as that particular business day, then... I think there's just some losers, and then there's some mega winners, and then obviously just like everything else, all though. all the way have three, and uh, even uh, though we were we were even though we were talking about four, yeah. So, um, Mark Diakiase, Di Di I've been practicing this I've one. I've been saying Diakise. Diakise, yeah. Uh, Tisha Torres and Michael Johnson. We'll take a break, probably in about 15 minutes, and then welcome uh, Diakiase. <laughs> I went back and I was trying to listen to, to some Diakise YouTube's. I heard right a couple here. different versions. Diakise? Okay, we'll that, go with I mean, that that's one. how I say it. But Yeah, uh, the English fighter, it, lightweight, solid. He'll be uh, joining the show. He's fighting a recent guest of ours, Drakkar Close, who uh, couldn't believe it when Burchak just out of nowhere threw out Drakkar. And I was like, well, we got to be talking about the same guy. I don't know that many Drakkars. <laughs> and... But the way he threw him out so casually, like, oh, yeah, you know, we're always bullshitting about Dracar Close. And I had never even heard of Dracar Close until two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then to hear his name pop up again, it was it was it was a shock. I got yeah. good feedback from his family. Burchak's family was tuning in. Yeah, and they go, man, he, he feels co-host the whole show though. He feels at home with you guys, you know, and you guys kind of like jab him a little, and 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 he's laughing back with you guys, and and says a lot of people just gather around and watch, and so uh, yeah, definitely, we definitely want to do that. Uh, it was tough because Monday was one of those days where I had a couple guests. And one of them was a possible co-host, but things just got lost over the holiday weekend, and so I didn't want to like trample over each other. Plus, I remembered the mic has been giving us problems. What's the update on on this third mic? So I'm not even so sure we can go for it deep, can we? Or no, there's some sort of routing issue. It's so the mic works. I moved. What I did was I moved the good mic over to the four pod. If you can see, it's connected to four. Yeah. So now it works. Um, but now the four doesn't work. It's some sort of routing issue, the guy said, but that's something that Kenny would probably have to look at because it has to do with this over here. Mm. Because he said everything else here is, is correct. That's bizarre. Yeah, it's just bizarre that it would all of a sudden happen, right? Yeah. It's not even like we could say, oh, yeah, there was another show here or something like that. Is there any way we can get Kenny in soon? Fourth of July, I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. That might be key, actually, because we might have some in-studio guests, and I don't like it when someone's leaning over somebody else's shoulder. Oh, yeah. Uh, we should have five, honestly, but tell me what you we think. never sorted out the one that got lifted uh, two years ago. Tell brand me new one, too. Uh, Four idea. brand new ones, and one of them just immediately went out. What? Diakise, if he wins his fight, press conference or whatever, don't you think he should pull out? cigar and just say close but no cigar <laughs> just puff on it wouldn't that be funny yes it would be it would but be he just puts his feet up on the table close but no cigar yeah uh maybe the cigar says victory on it or something and what can close say <laughs> a name like mark diakise i don't know no but playing off his own name oh uh i thought it might go a decision but you know me i like to close things out <laughs> and then, like, yeah, that's good. the little ele elevator eyebrow. Uh -huh. Sometimes if you're silly on purpose, it's actually more, um, it comes off better, comes off funnier. But people remember it. As long as people can recognize, oh, I get it, you were being silly. Kind of like, see what I did there, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. If you try and be too creative uh, and completely outwit yourself. Is that Humpty Sean? Yeah. Then, uh. Then you know sometimes it can blow up. Yeah, it's all in the execution as well. Mm -hmm. So depends on how you deliver it. Do you remember? You knew he was coming. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you remember Mike Tyson's punch out? What's up, Humpty Sean? <laughs> Do you remember that game? Uh, Mike Tyson's punch yeah. out. Yeah. I could probably tell you. You could use those headphones right there. I could probably tell you every every one of those characters. Go for it. Has some sort of weird thing about him, right? That you remember. It's the same Let me thing see that how many I can remember. About. I know the first guy was Don Flamingo. No, that was uh, Glass Joe. Glass Joe. Right. Okay. Uh, then Don Flamingo. No, then it was Von Kaiser. Okay. I don't remember that guy at all. He's a, the German guy with the curled up mustache. Mm -hmm. Then after him was Piston Honda. Oh, okay. I remember then the name there. After yeah. Piston, Are you impressed? Because this is actually kind of impressive, right? It is. Uh, Piston Honda. Then after Piston Honda was Don Flamingo. Oh, wow. After Don Flamingo was King Hippo. And after King Hippo Bald Bull? was no Tiger Ali something, and then after him was Bald Bull. Then after Bald Bull, this is where I d I I want to say it was Soda Popinski. And then after Soda Popinski, I think it was the second Super Don Macho Man Don Flamenco. You fight him again. Okay. And then after him, now all we have left is I think Sandman, right? Or uh, I know you have to fight Piston Honda again. So mm -hmm. he might be in there, and then Sandman, and then you get uh, Mike Tyson. I didn't realize it was that many. All I know is I could get to Mike Tyson, With and I got battered by Mike Tyson. I never beat him. I never beat him either. Matt has it, too. He Does let, he? He let me borrow it like a year ago, uh -huh. and I tried to just see what I could do again. That was awful. But the I only like, that's on my bucket list. I want to beat Mike Tyson. I remember what happened was Bald Bull exists, right? Or is yeah, that yeah. someone from another movie? I think you fight him twice. Isn't he the one where all you had to do was just deliver a timely jab when he came at you? Just boop, belly, pop him, and yeah. then that would be done, right? So I remember that once. I got stuck on him for a while, and finally he got figured out. 
And I thought Super Macho Man was going to be a lot tougher than he was supposed to. I mean, being that he's the gatekeeper to Tyson. And I remember beating oh, him pretty you. easily. Okay, so here's how it goes. It goes Glass Joe, Von Kaiser, Piston Honda, Don Flamingo, King Hippo, Great Tiger, Bald Bull, Piston Honda again, Soda Popinski, Bald Bull again, Don Flamingo again, and Mr. Sandman, Super Macho Man, and Mike Tyson. You missed Great Tiger then, right? I don't think Great you mentioned them. Great Tiger is, uh, well, he's Tiger Ali something. Okay. Well, you, you didn't mention them, though. No, I didn't. When you were... Yeah, I said Tiger Ali something. I didn't call him Great Tiger, though. Oh, okay. So did you get the order right? No, Close enough, I, I, right? I missed, like, this, the last part. Yeah. I thought, Close I thought enough, right, Junkie Nation? Give him his black belt. <laughs> 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 yeah, all right. <laughs> you probably could have said... <laughs> You probably could have said Bull Durham, yeah, this is gonna go Muhammad forever. Ali, Tiger Chung Lee, um, <laughs> Randy Macho Man <laughs> Savage, and uh, they still would have said, "Yeah, yeah, give it to him." Yep, yeah, uh huh. Yep. Yeah, no, su- he's good. He's I'm good. Surprised George Promote didn't say, goes. Nope. It's Iron Mike Tyson. You have no idea what you're <laughs> talking about. You're off the show. Promote goes, and Danny, just because you happen to do that little whistling sound right now, the the crickets, give him another belt as well. George, we'd ask you to kindly remove yourself. Did Sean just walked in. Make him the host <laughs> because he handed goes the phone. George, you're just off. <laughs> you're just gone. Junkie Nation, poor Vita. 866-522-2846. Happy 4th uh, of July, Humpty Sean. Hey, ha- Former Marine. off the top of your head, off the top of your head, uh, America is how many years old? Quick, quick, quick. I don't know. Quick, 1776. Quick, quick, quick. Isn't it 231? 241? 241? No, 1776 to 1976 is the 200 years. 86, 96, 06. Yeah, 41, 241. Wow. 241. How about that? Can you believe that just 200 years ago? You know, you always hear about the, the dinosaurs. Billions of years ago. Millions. Of, do they get into the billions of years ago or just millions of years ago, yeah, the dinosaurs? Millions. All right. And so millions of years ago, we had these dinosaurs. But yet, um, just 200 years ago, like – Literally, we this nation was created. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of amazing to, to be like a few it, generations away. Further along. That's what I'm saying. Why are we not flying up in? So, like from jet those millions of years where there was a brontosaurus and a stegosaurus and a and a tyrannosaurus rex and all the others that came with it. From those millions, we got to the colonial times where there wasn't electricity. Well, we, were, we weren't around when dinosaurs were around. Hmm? We weren't around. There were no cavemen at all? No, there were no cavemen. And even if there were, but there wasn't, that's kind of a tough riddle to solve, right? You walk out, what the fuck is that? And then he eats you, <laughs> eats a couple of your friends before you go, all right, he's not cool. Right. That guy doesn't like us. And it's not just him. It's all of them. It takes a while. I, I really thought that um, I couldn't believe, like, in the 1970s and 80s, how – bad things were how how uh racism like all that there stuff. not being any planes or oh. or cars <laughs> in the early part of the century uh-huh. you know what i mean and here we are like the way things just keep advancing advancing and, and i we were born I know in a good is, era i know this is ridiculous but i still wonder if one could ever teleport themselves and who would have the balls to do it because what if you could and then you just wind up in the wrong place what if you wind up where Matt Erickson was at a couple weeks ago? <laughs> you're like, take me to Matt Erickson. I want to be on the safari. And you're just off some coordinates. Like, you know, you look at your phone. You go, okay, yeah. Type in 978, you know, southeast, whatever. And it was supposed to be 977. But that coordinate all of a sudden lands you where the lions are. Mm-hmm. Oof, that would be horrible. Well, I think you got to. And then what if you just, poof, the gun, right? turned into dust? Or what if you just wound up on another planet or I don't I just don't know how far we want to get advanced you know they're talking about those drones and stuff like that and they're out there but what about like Jetsons uh, people flying in their own cars do do you really want that let's say you could do it do you really want it because there's is there a drunk uh, pilot of, of a plane that flies and you know how would you like figure this thing out I know the sky is, is ample and big Mm-hmm. But uh, how would you do it? Would you want to do it? Like, does it just become too much? Plus, even if you survive the crash, now you got to survive you the fall. The drop. Yeah. I mean, unless you can eject, but even then, now you're dodging other planes right on the way down. Like, you're not Frogger? safe until yeah, that's pretty bad. I don't know. I've thought about this a few times. Certain things where I think there's limits. I think maybe a lot of it uh, depends on whether you're religious or not. Like, I guess maybe if you believe there's a god, 
uh, you're probably going to believe that we'll probably never have a pill that you could take that could tell if somebody's lying or something. That'd just be anarchy if we knew what everybody was thinking in their mind. Mm -hmm. uh, living forever. Well, uh, you know, like remember that. we had the cousin that got married? I remember thinking, I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember on Saturday morning going, man, even if I was a billionaire and I had my private jet, I was just trying to think, his wedding's at 4.30, and I was thinking around this around 10. I go, even if I got to that private air airfield that they have here, mm -hmm. I, I don't even think I could get there in six hours. Like, I was just, I was sad that I didn't go, but I was thinking, even if, like I said, someone just said, here, here are the keys to a jet and the pilot, and get out of here, go. I just couldn't make it, and not, for some reason, I think I was on the shitter or showering. I don't know. I was just thinking of crazy shit, and I thought, uh, will someone a a ever be able to come with just a teleport or who knows? I do have an idea if I become a millionaire or a billionaire, and tell me if I'm off here, but for the first year, I'm not going to travel because I don't want to be two weeks into being a millionaire and have my plane go down, and I didn't get to Enjoy. experience any of that. So I'm gonna put like a, an embargo on just airplane travel. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, I got to get around in a car, um, but airplane travel gets the shelf for about a year. Mm -hmm. I still want to be able to enjoy the palace, all that stuff that I'm doing, and then after that, all right, if I go down, at least add a year of, of being Floyd. But uh, what do you think? Or is uh, that just stupid? No, it's not stupid, but I would think the temptation and I'm not would a be guy great. That's afraid of flying. Like, what if? The Redskins get to a Super Bowl. Like, I guess are you gonna drive across, you know, all the way to? <laughs> it's supposed to be a joke. Let's say it's in Miami. I guess you could drive there. So ma what if Manchester United got to a Champions League final, uh. and and it's against Real Madrid and it's supposed to be high scoring or whatever, and you know you could score tickets like your that'd Redskin be one was a little better just because Manchester United will probably be there a lot. The Redskins haven't done that in a long time. I <laughs> Humpty laugh Sean. over here. Humpty Sean erupted over out. there. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'd still do it that way, though. Let's do one quick call, then we're going to take our break. It's July 4th. It's Tuesday. It's fight week. Tough 25 finale on Friday, UFC 213 on Saturday. Uh, share your thoughts. Give us your predictions. You got all week to do it. We will have a lot of guests. Well, we have three today, but, you know, we're going to finish this the week strong, so I don't know that there will be many of these pockets for you to call in. 866-522-2846. What's up, Marco? Marco from Ecuador, America, happy 241st birthday. You know, in 1776, a whole bunch of white dudes decided, we don't want to pay the king of England any more taxes, so let's go to war. <laughs> yeah, something like <laughs> so that. It is. Yeah, well, they, they lost, they were going to hang, so and, and from trees, not like hang out. Uh, so good thing they won. Um, uh, I want to geek out, man. 65 million ago, dinosaurs. 300,000 years ago, humans. And now we're here. There you go. Humans were yeah, humans were first on the planet three hundred thousand years ago. Is that what it is? Well, the, homo, homo sapiens. We as a species, Homo sapiens, three hundred thousand. As a freaking ram, like Homo erectus, Australopithecus, all the way back up to two million years. And Neanderthal, that are our cousins, five hundred thousand. So there you go. I'm a geek when it comes to paleontology. So five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand was yeah. something that resembled a human being, yeah, not yeah. like a gorilla, for example. Right. Okay. No, no, like Neanderthals. Neanderthal cousins of ours, you know, that we... That now we it's 500,000 years ago? Mm -hmm. Where was the first one at? Where, where were they spotted at first? Okay, okay. Neanderthals, you know, the ones that you see on the... They, they, they look like, like the big brown and stuff. They live from 500,000 all the way until the last ice age. So that was until like 12,000 years ago. And then they went kind of sort of extinct. They live parallel to Homo sapiens, that is us. And they interbreed. Why so did they stink? Some of us... On, uh, we don't know. I guess we outdid them. We, we, we are smart and... And uh, we, we survived, and they didn't. Huh. So there you go. How do you know all it's this? It's a lot of... Uh, I, I'm so deep into paleontology and archaeology when I was a kid. I was always fascinated. And through the years, I always follow it. Uh, I watch the shows, the podcasts. Uh, whenever it comes to to dinosaurs and, uh, and, and you know, like all that stuff, I'm fascinated. I, 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 I read it, listen, study it, watch it. Justin Gage and Michael Johnson. Justin Gage is winning this weekend. Uh, sorry, Michael Johnson, but you are the gatekeeper to the stars. You know, I still got the memory of Kavi talking to Dana White while he was beating the crap out of you. And Justin Gagey is a, a star in the making. It's going to be a top five, but I think he wins on a decision. I'm going to let you guys get small. Okay, we'll see you. All right, I thought about this fight a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to whether or not Michael Johnson is going to play Justin's game. 
Because Michael Johnson can set the tempo in the fight. I think it's going to come to whether Justin's going to play Khabib's game. You think he'd do that? Well, he's got wrestling. And Michael obviously showed that he's nowhere near as dangerous when he's on the ground as when he's on the feet. I mean, he got submitted by Reza Bindadi. He got dominated by Khabib Nurmagomedov. But yet, if you stand with him, he's very dangerous. Remember, he's got wins over Barbosa and Ferguson. So at any point, I mean, some would argue Gagey's not as good as them. We don't know because Gagey's first now being tested. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a great fight, and Gagey loves to put on a show. He's not scared to lose. Uh, Johnson's got incredible speed. So I'm, sl I'm sl uh, siding with Johnson because I think he's given me a lot of proof, you know, over the years. But uh, I think you took Gagey, right? No, I ended up taking Oh, did you? You moved to Michael yeah. Johnson. All right, <laughs> you're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. Stay close. We will come back with Mark Diakise.
They are the stretch marks on the underbelly of the MMA community. But hey, stretch marks are the new tax. They are gorgeous George and Goes. All right, folks. Now remember, there's two fight cards this week. The Ultimate Fighter 25 finale, Johnson versus Gagey. That's Michael Johnson versus Justin Gagey. And yes, that's Justin Gagey, former WSOF lightweight champion, coming over to the UFC, debuting on Friday night. Here's the information on that fight card. There's two fights on the prelims, starting with the UFC fight pass at 6 p.m. Eastern time, followed by FS1 at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And then we go to the main card, FS1, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And the season that we're currently in ends on Wednesday. We will find out who Jesse JT Money Taylor will be fighting in the finale. Remember, James Krause has moved into the slot, but he has a medical issue that gets sorted out. We tossed out a few names as to who that could be that replaces Krause. If Krause gets replaced, we don't even know. But, of course, that person will fight Jesse Taylor. And then the winner of the, all that mess fights Diego Lima as the co-main event at Tough 25 finale uh, under Johnson versus Gagey. Uh, Drakkar Close, who was a guest of ours a few weeks ago, he's on the fight card in the featured bout against Mark Diakiase, who we should be talking to uh, shortly. Danny will give us an update on that uh, when we can. We're trying to connect with the hotel room right now. So, very cool to see Humpty Sean. Uh, long listener. time listener of the show. Does he still listen? Or Remember, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Remember he rapped last time he was here? He had some great calls back in the day. He, did. he, he was a top up. 10 guy for a long time. And uh, we reconnected with him maybe two years ago. He came with the dad and Michael the sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so uh, good to see Humpty Sean. And you're all invited to come to the Mandalay Bay anytime you're in town. That's where we're at. 10 a.m. Pacific is the start time. So join us one day. All right, so joining us now on the hotline is Mark Diakise, who's fighting Jakar Close on Friday night at the Tough 25 finale. What's up, Mark? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good, guys. Are you? Good. Thank you. Thanks for joining us here on the MMA Junkie Radio Show. You're on with George and Goes. Please share with us one more time the correct, correct pronunciation for your name. We don't want to disrespect in any way. Uh, you have already by saying Drakkar Win. <laughs> Is it you? Drakkar Win? <laughs> you somebody said I watched interviews. I have one of you said. Oh win. yeah, it's you, Goes. <laughs> that's that's you right. <sighs> I mean, I, I can I can tap out and let you handle it. George. Yeah, so so we we did have Jakar, and he flipped it on us. He flipped the script, and he goes, "Who do you got?" And I go, "Man, it's I got okay. I got to shoot yeah. you straight." I go, "I got Mark because I've seen more of Mark, <laughs> and and I yeah. I have not, haven't seen anything of, of close and goes did yeah. go with close. Yeah. yeah, so now you got to face yeah, the music. Yeah, I got to face the music. Tell him, tell him it's not his words. <laughs> <laughs> it's word, I'm telling you. All right, but let me it's tell you okay something. You, you gotta, hey, we're gonna build your cards confident hope. Mark, I did come up with a good idea for you. So yeah. If I can make up for it. Yeah. This is my idea. We'll, yeah. we'll say when you win, because I don't want to disrespect you again. You pull out a cigar and you say close, but no cigar. And, and then you, then you smoke the cigar right cigar. there in front of the media. What do you think? No. <laughs> Draka can't get close. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, 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 thanks for being a good sport. Um, you know, it's funny because I was, I was going through your social media, and, of course, a few people, probably close fans maybe, are asking you about uh, the wrestling and the grappling and this and that. And, of course, you just said night-night uh, to them. <laughs> so I, I guess I imagine that's just a topic that you're just done talking about. Obviously, you know where your strengths yeah. are, and, and every fighter tries to shore up uh, their deficiencies. Um, you're part of a great team. And if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Steve Mako is the, the head of wrestling at American Top Team, correct? Indeed. Yes, he is. Yeah. What's it like training with that guy? It's great. Uh, you know, he's a really great co coach. He understands my style like a fight because he knows I like striking, so he understands what type of things I need to do. And uh, it's just been great working with him because I've had, like, I've been getting poor with Russians and everybody, so I, I sort of learned how to wrestle properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he, he, he understands what to do with me so he, it's great he's one of the most intense uh wrestlers you know sp that we ever saw in division one uh and you know usa wrestling so not only can he teach but he's very intense is that the same way those practices he, are as he, well he, he, sometimes you're gonna say this you, you said five minutes left <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it makes it makes you work yeah we'll be drill it's drills after drills drills after drill 
we were wrestling. We wrestled for hours. Sometimes we go over the time. You're like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Before we only do like uh, now or something. Yeah, he, he knows his stuff. Uh, I really, I'm, I'm grateful to have somebody like that. Right. Now, as much as he wants to impose his knowledge on a guy like yourself, how open are the grappling coaches to what the striking coaches are teaching? Like, do the coaches communicate a lot amongst each other and learn a lot from each other? Uh, well, what, what usually happens when I'm sparring, they'll have, like, uh, three different – they'll have more code, they'll have a striking coach, and they'll put somebody there at different times. So they put, like, a grappler or a boxer, you know, just – I'm learning so different styles. So I'll have, like, a Moko. If I'm getting a wrestler, Moko will be telling him what to do. A grappling guy will be telling him what to do. And the striking guy will just give me instructions. So he's, he's, pretty, he's really, really, really based like, on me. So he's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Marty Akise, our guest here on MMA Junkie Radio. He's fighting on Friday versus Jakar Close in the featured bout at Tough 25 finale. That's headlined by Michael Johnson and Justin Gaethje. All right, goes. What do you have for Mark? Mark, so just to clear something up, I know this is your second time with ATT for a camp. Is this just going to be a yeah. tradition thing where you come down and do uh, part of the camp, or will you eventually make a full move? Uh, well, what, what I'm, I've been doing now, I've already got my social security number, so next move, hopefully I get a green card. But I want to make myself comfortable first. I don't want to move somewhere and start living in, in like you know, dorms and stuff, and mm-hmm. something like that. So I want to make a bit of money and uh, be comfortable before I move so I know I've got some sort of income coming in and because uh, I've got a family at the same time. So I've got to look after them. So I've got to have something coming in before I can actually make a full move. You fought in the United States before, but this is going to be your first time fighting in what everybody calls the fight capital of the world, Las Vegas. Can you tell us a little bit what, what that means to you? Uh, it, mean, it means, like, everything because, I, I, you know, I've worked my, all my entire, my, well, for the past seven years to get to where I am. And uh, obviously, as you said, this is the biggest stage you can ever get, get on Vegas and uh I'm on it. Uh, it's not really into my head. I'm more focused on my opponent in front of me. To me, it's just uh, another fight, so I'm more focused on the fight. Maybe we'll kick in after the fight, but I'm more, right now, I'm more focused on the fight. I know you're focused on your opponent at hand, but the one name that keeps getting kind of thrown around, and i got to be honest, when I first heard it, I thought, wow, that'd be a great matchup. Paul Felder. When does that happen? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know how it happened. I think he called me out, but... The reason that fight didn't happen, it was uh, I was trying to re- renegotiate my contract with the UFC, and it was last fight on my contract. So I was trying to get decent money because I felt like that's what I should I should get. And uh, <laughs> obviously, I had to like play a little bit to make it right. So they didn't pay me right, so I said no. And then uh, obviously that fight didn't come out, come my head, and then uh, I got a better better contract. So it made sense for me to play a little bit. Okay, but right now you do have a contract uh, going forward. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. And lastly, the break dancing is that uh, the it, what, does it does it ever change or is that the celebratory dance? <laughs> to be honest, when I do things in a fight, I don't even know like I'm doing it. It just happens. Like I do splits sometimes, and uh, I can't even do splits. So it just happens. That it, it depends on the moment in time. Sometimes I just do whatever crazy stuff. <laughs> Whatever happens, it happens with me. It's pretty legit, man. Uh, you look like you could do some, you could uh, compete in gymnastics, <laughs> break dancing. I don't know, very athletic. But listen, no, it's when I, when I was young, me and my brother, we used to do some sort of like free running, we jumping down buildings, we used to do stuff like that. So I'm sort of a, know a bit. You talking about that parkour stuff? Yeah, yeah, that type of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow! Any serious injuries ever come from that? No. No. Damn. Very durable. Very athletic. All right. Well, listen, it's fight week. We'll keep it short. Thank you for joining us on the MMA Junkie Radio Show. Cannot wait for your fight on Friday, mate. No problem. If if Drakkar's listening to this, just let him know he's a dead man. This is not a joke. I'm going to put him to sleep. I'm bringing a pillow for him. <laughs> what round does it end? All right. Round in. If he tried to wrestle, it will go to second. But if he tried to be aggressive, like he said, he's going to be aggressive. It's going to be a very, very short night for him. So I'm picking early second. There you go. That There you have it, folks. Yeah. There's a prediction from Mark Diakise. <laughs> Thank you for the time, sir. What, what, what's your friend again? What's your friend's name? Goes. <laughs> oh, man. Remember that. Tell him I'm going to pull. He, he, he owes me money after beating him because he shouldn't say stuff like that. How about Chipotle? <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> Can I just buy you lunch? <laughs>
Yep. All right, all right. All right, we'll take 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 it easy. See ya. No problem, guys. All right, bye. Right. So I'm on a hit list now? You are, man. Yeah, all right. And that's a scary dude. Oh, I, yeah. I would not want to mess with him. But I can I think see him coming a mile away with that red hair, so Vegas is a big place. Just the break dancing alone could hurt me. Huh. I think there's probably a move in there. Well, you oh, know, you'd be oh, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. is that what you're going to do, dude? You're going to break dance? All right, let's go. And the next thing you know, he's taking my leg out, mm -hmm. and then boom, here come some hammer fists, and I'm just out. <laughs> and he still put on a show for the crowd that gathered around. So I am not messing with Mark uh, Diakise. Very cool guy and uh, an exciting fighter. Very fun to talk to him. Thank you to Paige for setting that up. And that's one of three guests coming your way on today's show. Uh, we're also going to be talking to uh, Tisha Torres and Michael Johnson, one of the headliners. So very cool. Very cool to catch up with these fighters on fight week. He's a very uh, – he sounds very relaxed. He does. I like hearing that tone uh, from him. I've often said those are the scary, those are often the most scary individuals, and then there's of course some that are in have intense. incredible focus and intensity, and and they get the job done too. There's mm -hmm. really no right or wrong. You ever hear of the ones that just stay in the hotel room and don't leave, um, versus the ones that go out and some will take in Adam Hunter show. Like Adam Hunter's here all week. Mm -hmm. You hear a lot of the fighters that are actually fighting. They'll be there. They're, they loosen up. There's not a right or wrong. It's just whatever works for you. What happens is well, that's the right whoever loses on Friday or Saturday in this case, people will then say, well, maybe he should have been in his hotel room yeah. uh, focusing rather than being out. And, of course, there's the flip side. Dude, you got to leave the hotel room. All you thought about was the fight. You got to get out and breathe some fresh air. So, yeah, there, there's but no that's right. that's right or wrong. It's whatever works for you. It's whatever works for you. And... Sometimes the fighters switch it themselves based off their previous fight. He, this game is such a it's such a coin flip at times that I, I just believe in being prepared and happy, especially by the time you get to this week. You better have done all the work then. Mm -hmm. um, you need a safe weight cut, and you need to get back to as close as you can, hydrated to 100%, have fun out there. Um, it's great to be consumed with – goals like Rhonda was because she was a goal or excuse me a bronze medalist in the Olympics so the fact that she was an Olympian and medaled is amazing followed by being the strike force bantamweight champ and the UFC bantamweight champ I just feel so terrible that her life is the way it is now I, I just remember we used to see her at tough enough and she would just smile and smile and dream about this is my first step and then a couple mm -hmm. regional fights and Strike Force at the time because there was no UFC, but then eventually, you know, getting to the UFC and and I happened to come across uh, one of the websites Mania or someone just has late night tweets, and I came across uh, her and Travis Brown and you know I hadn't seen her smile in a while but it looked like she was cooking for Travis Brown because he's fighting, and, and I was like oh good for her it looks like she's maybe enjoying life again. I think but she had to pull away to do that. Being so consumed, uh, you, you can't argue with her result, the results of her career. But at the same time, I mean, I think there's more to life than, you know, just, just the career itself. I think there's been people that have found the balance of being great enough to uh, be a world champion, but at the same time enjoying life. Like John Jones, another guy that kind of derailed. Uh, well, he's had a good time like, uh, in derailing, you know what I mean, the, the stuff that he's done, but. Randy Couture, Tito Ortiz, they seem like guys that were, I don't want to say Randy was edgy, but he did things, he did movies, he was on TV, but he still was able to maintain just being a, a regular guy and being able to do cool stuff. Like, when you see Tito out there fishing with his kids and stuff, like, he has that great balance of being that fighter, being in the public eye, but not getting consumed by it. So there are there are some, I guess, right? That you and me. Oops, sorry. So let me ask you this. Think about it while we go to break. Who has had, to you, a great career and also appears to have a great life? Like, no depression, uh, you know, um, maybe TBI, any forms of TBI. Uh, One came you right know, to my head. Maybe um, somebody who is going to probably walk with a cane a little bit earlier than most human beings do. Oh. Or just, you know, anybody that spiraled out of control. Think about it and come out, see how many names you can come up with. Um, but really, if you think about it, like everyone, a, a lot of the big names out there have uh, either not had the most picturesque, I guess, personal life to accompany 
their professional sporting career. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's 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 not it's not easy to come up with that list. It seems like everyone has had their trials and tribulations. So my point is, being great in the sport does come with a lot of costs, and not many have been able to find. A uh, pretty good balance of it. All right, you're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. Stay close. We'll be right back. And again, happy birthday, America. They are the stretch marks on the underbelly of the MMA community. But hey, stretch marks are the new tax. They are gorgeous George and Goes. All right, Goes, did you think of the question? I did. A fighter who seems to balance personal life, uh, athletic life, current or past. Obviously, I don't think we can predict the future, but maybe you could take a stab. I don't think that would be uh, incredibly crazy. Maybe someone who's destined. Now, remember, Goes, I want to know... Let's talk at least championship level fighters. Okay. I think that should be the cutoff. Otherwise, we could, you know, kind of go on forever. Mm-hmm. But someone that's worn a belt in a major organization, who seems to have had uh, a happy life. There you go. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. Current, Michael the Count Bisbee. Okay. Past, Rich Franklin. And going back even further, Hoist Gracie. All of them have held the strap. All of them have at least been in, say, one movie. Uh, I think they've all been in the public eye. And I'm pretty sure they've all had jobs within MMA outside of where they, you know, fighting. Right. I thought of two. Um, these are both current. Dominic Cruz and Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier in his personal life uh, had a a baby daughter that that he lost but i don't think that was affected by the professional life so obviously that was a tragedy for him now he's married with two kids and he seems to have a bright future in front of the camera once he's done fighting uh he's only come up short against the goat 
in many people's eyes, John Jones, and he has a chance to avenge that here in a couple weeks. Dominic Cruz is the other guy. I, the only thing I ever remember him talking about that really seemed to crush him was uh, a girl he was dating who left him because I don't think she believed in his dreams. And But other than that, um, you know, who's world champion, uh, came back from those devastating knee injuries and still fought, you know, to a great to great heights, you know, capturing his world title again. And uh, he's still one of the high-ranked Bantamweights out there. I don't think he's done. But they seem to be, like, content in the lives that they lead. And, mm -hmm. and so far, everything's been pretty good. Outside of uh, the UFC, Michael Chandler seems to be yeah. a real happy camper. Um, but, you know, you mentioned Tito Ortiz. Uh, Tito, what would you call his decision to, I guess – date the adult star jenna jameson like was that like hey tito fist bump or you know I, I, he said it himself i mean it brought a lot of drama yeah he said it life. himself and i think he's dysfunctional dysfunctional um i had a dysfunctional life and i fell in love with someone that had a dysfunctional life so i don't know if you 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 score that as an l for him or you know at the time it seemed like they fell for each other and they had kids or who knows what mm. i guess he had Randy, kids. I guess, had a couple divorces, you know, but he seems very happy now, and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, probably would have been nice. He he seemed like the type of guy, especially being Vegas based, that probably should have started and ended with the UFC. So that didn't happen, and we'll never know all the reasons why. Uh, you mentioned Hoyce. Hoyce had one time that he got popped for performance enhancing drugs and one income tax problem. So again, not the he, he he overcame both, but uh, if you're looking at a resume, like at a file for someone, you know those, that's a, I guess a couple of uh, black marks on the jacket, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, Liddell seemed to have a pretty good life. I mean, I can't think of anything he had. Do you remember? Uh, I mean, any brushes with know, the like law? No, I remember when he was on that show, and I guess he had stayed up too late. Oh yeah, I mean, that was probably his, right? Yeah, that was probably his darkest moment. Um, <sighs> update on Hughes. I heard Hughes is starting to respond. He opened his eyes, right? And off the ev ventilator. Yeah, so that's pretty good. But uh, GSP seemed to have a pretty normal life. But then when he went on that Rogan podcast, he's talking about aliens and abductions. And I'm like, oh, God, is this guy losing it? Like, is he so focused and... Um, so guarded, you know, from his superstardom that, I don't know, you know, he got drawn into certain beliefs. Uh, that that one was a little bit bizarre for me. I think everybody has something like that, though. Yeah? Yeah. That's a bit much to think you're going to get abducted by anything. I mean, remember he said he couldn't sleep and all that? <laughs> yeah. That seems a like a lot, right? That's out of the norm. It's definitely out of the norm, but I think everybody has weird things like that. Mm-hmm. I still, uh, to this day, well, not every time. I'm kind of actually. Yeah. What do you think will happen with Connor? Could Connor fall under? He's so far, he's checking out pretty good. No, I think. Uh, I think it's a lot. It's going to be a lot for him. Yeah. Yeah. You know what got me thinking that he is no longer Connor McGregor. Like I thought, I thought he was regular dude. Um. Hell no, not anymore. No. Like I'm always gonna be the guy that used to be a plumber. Well, no, not not necessarily that, but I felt like he was still normal and didn't feel like he was above. It was just more of a front. But what did it for me was when he felt like he needed to need, uh, get to new levels of toying with the opponent and toying with the sport. And when he said, "I am boxing," like, what is all that? I am boxing. Like, where did he come up with that or think that that one was gonna stick? Uh, I still think he's smart. So if he were, if we were to ask him that question, I think he would have an answer. Off, for it. off the record, off the he would record, say, yeah. "Listen, man, this is the deal." Mm -hmm. You would probably Maybe. go, huh, "All right." Yeah, but when I heard him say that, I was like, "Okay, dude, don't don't become this mega superstar that all of a sudden you're, you know, in, into uh, bordering on ridiculousness." All right, folks, we got a break coming up here, and after that, a sports update. We'll join you again in a couple minutes. MMA Junkie Radio.
All right, here we go. It's the second hour of the MMA Junkie Radio Show. Happy 4th of July to everybody. Be safe out there. Don't burn a house down. Careful with them fireworks. Some of them are pretty nutty. They're illegal for a reason, so shoot them towards a cactus or something, not towards someone's home. You should see how crazy it gets here in Las Vegas. Hey, why isn't there an embedded? Am I missing something? Embedded. There was. They did the Shashenko Nunes. But I think that was like the road, whatever. The countdown. Countdown, yeah. I saw uh, that. I fell asleep. Embedded. Toward, I have about 20 minutes to go, but I caught most of Valentina versus none. And it, was, it was late night. I wasn't bored. Yeah, you're it was right. just It was late night, but embedded, usually there's an episode by now. Maybe just fourth. If you want to watch the countdown episode, it is on MMA Junkies front page. Go there. Click it. It's 45 minutes long. They separate the fights between Nunez and Shevchenko, Romero versus Whitaker. So check it out. And if anybody has it embedded, maybe maybe maybe, maybe they're just going to not do it for on this one because it's the holiday or two fight cards or something maybe. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe because in a I like, fight week. I like embedded. If you all haven't heard, Donald Cerrone and Robbie Lawler is on for UFC 214. The UFC president, Dana White, had told R. John Morgan that it was highly unlikely that was going to happen. But I guess things changed. Cerrone's on the road to recovery from uh, the staph infection on his leg. And he'll be ready to go at 214, which is really, really stacked now because in the last five, six days, it was announced Tyrone Woodley would be facing Damian Maya. So now you got the two title fights with Jones and Cormier. You got Maya versus Woodley. And I sure hope Maya was training. I know Woodley started a camp about a month ago. so Dude, he's been in it for a while. Yeah. He doesn't so stop training. I don't know. You know, Maya, hopefully he got, you know, he agreed to it. And hopefully he's ready to go, but. Boy, this is less than a month ago. Five rounds against a guy like Tyrone Woodley is no joke. And now Cerrone versus Lawler. Cyborg gets Tanya Evinger. Uh, Invicta gets a new uh, main event, which has been – I think it started off with Megan Anderson, then Tanya Evinger, and then now there's some new names out there. But um, – They've had a, a little bit of a juggling act themselves, but that fight card in Anaheim is going to be pretty nutty. Well, you one, one of the best ones that they've put together this year, that's for sure. Have you talked to our friend? Which one? The one that lives in that vicinity? Yeah, but we didn't really come to an agreement on anything. I think a lot of it starts with could we even get the codec machine, mm. you know, if we wanted to follow through with what we said. And that's a conversation that I can have tonight because our general manager will be here from the channel. So we can chat with her today, at the latest tomorrow, and see what what possibilities are there. Uh, without that, we, we we can't do it, right? I don't think well, we, you want to do your 25th hundred show in Costa Mesa, do you? Well, I was almost thinking, why not? But then afterwards, say after weigh-ins, just have a party. Just an old school, how we used to do it, just a big party. Suppose that's so. Because now everybody all right. can go, right? Mm-hmm. Then mm. the next day you just watch the fights and it's just more of a chill group, the leftovers, right? Hmm. But a uh, party sounds like a, a good time. If she says that the codec is a strong possibility, I'd rather codec from somewhere. Okay. Yeah, maybe you could still do both, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it sounds like you really want to be in Orange County that week. Yeah. Okay. You don't? Uh, I'm not against it. Mm. Yeah. So that's home, you know? That's so where I, it started. Uh, I'm totally down. It makes down. the most sense. You know how lucky Bagotino had a fight this past week? I didn't. He beat Pedro Nobre, um, and he's a ranked fighter, so he got the submission. Had to take a look at him, but he's still out there doing his thing. He fought for FNG, which is uh, an outfit in Russia, along with uh, ACB's another one that's that's uh, putting shows on. But that was probably the only thing to really consider. Fitch has been out of the top 15 for a while. He got a win over Brian Foster at PFL. And other than Shudo and Pancrase and some select shows around the world, there mm -hmm. just there wasn't anything. Poor Minimal Man lost there. again. Uh, I, I wonder how much he gets to fight, you know? It's got to be a lot, I think. Really? I think, I'm well, not a lot, but a good chunk for who he is. Uh, I suppose. And I, I don't think people like... You, you see minimal, man. You're not expecting him to be in fascinating shape or anything like that, right? I mean, he's going to come in, and he's going to get the job done early, or he's out. But he's probably going to put on a show in the process. MMA submission of the month for June. Um, 
we, you know, every month we vote on submission of the month, KO of the month, fight of the month. And the nominees were Brian Kelleher versus Yuri Alcantara, Claudia Gadelia versus Karolina Kovalkiewicz, uh, Ben Wynn versus Tim Elliott. By the way, you see how Tim Elliott's featured in that reality show tomorrow? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm hearing that it's going to get really, really spicy in there. Things are going to go down. James Gallagher versus Chinzo Machida. Zach Freeman versus Aaron Pico. Uh, the winner was Zach Freeman over Aaron Pico. That's who I voted for. Did Mike Bond is the, the chairperson for getting this going. He asked for all of our opinions, and then we vote. Didn't he say a long time ago that if we had someone – outside of the ones he had selected, to, to throw them out there, right? Yeah. So my writing candidate was Kevin Lee because maybe what hurt it, technically it did go down as a submission. It really did. It wasn't like a doctor stoppage or nothing like that, referee stoppage. It really went down as a submission. But maybe because of the controversy, it uh, it had no I finality guess, to it, I think is why. Because I really appreciated his sequence of, when he took his back to softening him up to getting uh, hooks in, then he had, you know, he had a body triangle with him with the leg inside. He went to choke him. Then when Kiesa properly fought the hands, uh, he made the adjustment and went palm to palm. But did you see that move when he bit his glove? No. Um, Kevin does a move that a lot of people haven't seen. He bit his own glove when then he sunk back and got the uh, – the, I think it was the first choke. Wait, I believe so, yeah. He was having trouble with his body the way it was torqued, mm-hmm. and he bit his own glove and then went in for the choke. It was really, really slick. Now, I don't know if that's – if you would call that a dirty practice. tactic or what, but I know there's others that um, – I mean, you there's chokes. your own trunk. Yeah, there's chokes that are done with, you know, others' geese and, and stuff like that. So uh, I, I, I want to ask, like, a purist in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu what they thought of it, but – so he did that. My point is, him submitting Kiesa, that's legit, man. Like, just beating Kiesa is, is legit, but submitting another high-level grappler I think is legit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that, you know, he was done and, and starting to lose consciousness. And, of course, that's a whole other con- controversy that I don't want to get into. But I didn't even get a reply from young Mike Bond. I think it didn't I have, think Mike uh, Bond and I, we might have a problem here. So next week we're going to have to figure it out because another thing is he's the one that puts up the tweets from Fight Night. I and don't think I'm I've ever been there put on there. And I'm just trying to be once. funny and trying to just share my thoughts. I'll, I'll judge around. I'll be serious. And I'm thinking, how do I get on this guy's list? I swear to God, Damon Martin, Jeremy Botter, Mike Chiapetta, Luke Thomas, they could sit there and say, someone farted on press row. And it would make – the pro tweets or, or whatever we call them. The, uh, God, the embarrassed. Twitter reactions. Twitter reactions. And I could write, sitting here with Ronda Rousey and Conor McGregor, and they're sharing their thoughts on <laughs> the end of this fight. <laughs> and and because I put it out on my tweet with them in my video, I still wouldn't make Mike Bond's favorite tweets. So did I piss in his Cheerios or what's the deal? I will have to ask him. I was excited he was going to be here next week, and I was like, oh, man, we'll get a bucket of beers and hang out. And I love talking, picking his brain about the stats and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, one hell of a reporter. But, yeah, I just can't seem to sometimes get a reply from him. or Because um, even if he would have said, nah, fat boy, we don't take write-ins, I would have said, oh, okay. That's better than no answer. That's better than no answer. But, but I didn't even get never that. But you've answered too, right? I mean, like I try and answer everyone. When you when you have your file, when the police open it up, there'll probably be a few, right? Because I, I know I have some on there. So uh, I probably couldn't I'm, be that guy. I, I don't have many. You didn't answer me. I don't have very go. many. Really? I have exchanges with Dan Stupp, mm-hmm. and he'll no answer me more than I know answer him. I, I, I think I always late. answer him. I'm very he's the boss. Sometimes. Uh, Matt, same thing. I would say he's pretty even with me. Uh, John is pretty even with me. We'll always answer each other. Mike, mm-hmm. for sure, I think. Has no answered me more than I've no answered. Fernandez no answered me more than I've she no answered, answered him. Not by much, but yeah. I think just starting with "Welcome to the team," you know, when she first got hired. <laughs> and I think everyone else got a smiley face, "Thank you," and then I didn't, I didn't get anything. So I was like, oh, "Okay, boy, what did I say?" You know. But uh, I, uh, I do realize I'm, I'm an ass at times, and maybe it's 
Have caught up to me Raptors? or who knows what, but God, I'm a little lonely over here, guys. Huh? You made fun of the Raptors at all? Maybe, yeah. Canadian jokes? Who knows? Young, so young I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna think I'm gonna go to Target and get a friendship <laughs> card and tie it to a bucket of beer. Mm -hmm. So we'll get um PBR um Bols what is it what's the the one up there that Molson they or something? Molson, yeah, one of those beers. Mm -hmm. And get him a bucket and go, Hey, let's, let's how you doing, man? But you Welcome. know what's gonna happen. What? You hand him that and then he'll tweet. Craziest thing just happened at the MMA Junkie Radio Studios. Some Inside the at Mandalay Bay. <laughs> Some guy just walked by wearing a, a funny T-shirt. He'll probably go, in the name of the Father and the <laughs> Son and the Holy Ghost, and spray it all over me. All over your face. Yeah. So the winner is Zach Freeman over Aaron Pico. I, I, I just thought what Lee did was amazing. Uh, the Why way he thrusts, the way he thrusts his hips, and then he makes the adjustment and goes outside the leg. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was torquing and choking, and then he's putting his chest in. You know, so basically he was crushing Kiesa while choking him as well. It, it's uh, close to flawless technique, actually. If, if there's and, and I, I was watching that going, wow, and he's doing that to Kiesa, who's legit. So I, I was more impressed by that than than um, uh, an O&O &O guy, you know, decorated wrestler, one point away from being an Olympian, getting choked out, but still an O&O &O professional uh, fighter. Uh, and not to take any way, th anything away from Zach Freeman because he's – a legit grappler himself, but mm -hmm. but still, um, maybe good for him. League did walk away with, with a bonus, and he's as popular as he can get. He's been headlining, so maybe he doesn't need it. But, I, uh, but there's I, I no just controversy. I think it's definitely in there. Really? In fact, I would even go as far as saying it might even be up for submission of the year. It wouldn't win, but it would definitely be in the talks because, like you said, not a lot of people even attempt to do that on Kesa, mm -hmm. let alone get away with it. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I hear where you're coming from, but I think the reason he probably didn't do it was because of that, because of the controversy. Shout out to Tony Palladio, who's in the Facebook chat. Shout out to Brandon Condra, Mike Gonzalez, Benjamin Todd Wa uh, Fa Webster, sorry, uh, Ramundo Martin, a.k.a. Showtime from Tennessee. He says he's going to be in Las Vegas tonight. So are you coming out to the strip at all tonight, or are you staying home? Not tonight, no. Not tonight? Yeah. Okay. Uh Blake Bongiorno, he is – actually threw a story that accompanied a topic that we had earlier. Rashad Evans confirmed GSP's story of a UFO in New Mexico. Uh, apparently they made a fight land vice. Sorry, ju the word vice jumped out at me. I thought it was the, uh, the TV show The vice. TV show that good show. Rashad may have been on. I, I'm starting to really like it. Jason Lackey also in our chat. Michael Nagy also in our chat uh, hanging out. Michael Nagy I think is going to be in town. Or may Is already he? be in town. Yeah. Showtime gets in tonight. There's uh, quite a few junkies out visiting. Yeah, no doubt. 866-522-2846 is the number to call in. Danny, let's take a break right now because we have two guests towards the end of the show. And I want to make sure that we're all sorted out with the breaks. Um, that way we don't run into any problems because fighters on fight week sometimes are a little bit harder to track down. So I want to... Dot all my I's and cross all my T's. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM, Rush 93. Stay close. We'll be right back. I could make those people dance and maybe they'd be happy for a while.
to link into the MMA Junkie Radio Network. Hit us up on Twitter.com at MMA Junkie Radio. This is MMA Junkie Radio. Here are your hosts, Cortez George and Ghost. Saturday night at 7 Eastern, it's UFC 213 from Las Vegas. Enjoy hard-hitting, cage-rattling action from inside the octagon, featuring the women's bantamweight championship bout between Amanda Nunes when she defends her belt against Valentina Shevchenko. Listen to the pre-fight prelims and post-fight coverage on Fox Sports, on SiriusXM Rush, uh, channel, excuse me, on Channel 83, and on the SiriusXM app. That's different. I don't think we've ever done that, have we? No. Fox Sports on uh, Channel 83. That is cool. Cool. I wonder who will be involved in uh, with that. Maybe R.J. Clifford? Well, I hope so. Yeah. You would think. I would think so, yeah. Or maybe one of the pundits over there, like Cormier, Cruz, Bisping, uh, Woodley. Nah, I think they got too much on their plate. Yeah, because... When the fight's over, they, the the Fox has their own show, so you're right. They mm-hmm. probably wouldn't be able to do that. But I'm thinking maybe you got like uh, maybe Florian, something like maybe that. Maybe Florian. Maybe whoever. Well, Florian will be in Vegas too. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are coming. There's going to be a live UFC tonight and a live UFC that's or what's it called? T- tough Talk. That's open to the public. So Karen Bryant, Michael Bisping, Kenny Florian, they're coming out. And I know we did a, a piece on that on MMA Junkie, letting everyone know the events that are taking place. There's a women of the UFC panel. There's a Legends talk. There's the Hall of Fame ceremony. And it tells you where it's at, what are the times, if the public's allowed, where you should go, blah, blah, blah. I will look for it and tweet it. But come on, some of you, uh, I don't think it. I'm going to go do. Oh, no, it's all right. uh, sorry, I got a quick text. I. Uh, it doesn't get any easier. The writers cannot make it any easier for you. All the information's there. They take the time to craft these pieces, and then a fresh set of eyes. One of our red editors takes a look, and we really do our best to make it as easy as possible so that even a fifth grader could figure it out. I got to check this email here involving one of our guests. Let's um, take this phone call. Let's do that. Aaron from Texas. What's up, Aaron? How are you doing? Hey, guys. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? Doing well. Hey, uh, Rock, I just wanted to wish you guys a happy 4th uh, of July. Hi, Thank you. Hi, guys. Have a happy 4th. Hey, how you doing? Happy 4th happy, happy of July. Happy 4th uh, to you as well. Good. How are y'all? Uh, just chilling. How about you? Are y'all enjoying that nice Vegas heat? No, not so much. We don't really like the heat too much, <laughs> but it was nice in uh, Orange County. We were there last week, so we're we're okay. Yeah, No, that's good. Well, we just wanted to wish you guys a safe and happy 4th. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, any yeah. MMA thoughts at all? What's up? Anything you want to share on the MMA front at all? Actually, yeah. Um, I want to. I want to give a shout out to Wanley Tran for. Uh, he Damn did. Uh, Herb Damn Dean's, it. Uh, I should have hung weekend. up. I should have hung up. That way, I could have taken credit for it. I saw it as well. But Aaron was an inspiration for Wan Lee. Uh-huh. So credit to you, Aaron, for doing that. And yeah, Wan Lee, shout out to you. Uh, proud to be your buddy. Uh, Juan Lee is now a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. He's stuck with it, and now he took Herb Dean's class uh, to do the judging, and I guess he got a love for the refing as well. So, I, I mean, I, I incredibly stoked for that guy. Talk about being immersed in the sport, huh? Yeah, really, really stoked for yeah. Juan Lee. That, that that course is tough, too. I mean, I've, I've read uh, synopses and uh, reviews of Herb Dean's course online. It is no joke. I mean, it was way more extensive than the one I did with John McCarthy was. You know, uh, the one I did with McCarthy a while back was uh, basically he tried to stretch his whole co- command course in the one weekend because he was trying to get the Arkansas Athletic Commission up to snuff with all the judges and referees. And they, at that time, four or five years ago, they weren't actually required to be ABC certified. So that was the whole purpose of the course. That's how I snuck in. But, I mean, Juan Lee's, I mean, he had to demonstrate stuff, you know, like how to get up from this. I mean, Juan Lee, I'll give a quick story for that. He uh for being asked for them to show an arm bar. So he did the old school, if you remember, uh, Matt Hughes, GSP-1, where he got he was inside controlling spun all the way around to the far side arm bar. He mm-hmm. only did that. He said Herb got up to match the point. But oh. uh, the big thing for Juan Lee was he, uh, before he hit the course, we had, we had a couple of talks, and he had a hard time difference between a technical decision and a technical draw and stuff like that. And it's just that's really confusing um, for first time. But we were able to work through that, and I have no doubt that he passed with flying colors. That's awesome. That's awesome to see that. Um, John actually is having a course at Extreme Couture 
and you'll have to go on his website, but it's after this international fight week. It's at Extreme Couture, and it happens, I think, over three days. There's judging, refing, and then either both or maybe simulations, who knows what. But I thought I saw that it happens over three courses, or three days, and then later in the month, and I think it's in Connecticut, at Mohegan Sun, he's doing it again. So any of you that have ever wanted to get involved, if you want to go and take that course, there you have it. I think Herb goes twice a year as well, and it appears he just had one in Pasadena, so maybe check his website if you're in any way interested in this, inspired to be a part of the sport. I think Aaron from Minnesota was going to do it once and then maybe back that at the end, but uh, a few hey, people have Jersey really, Mike. really oh, come Mike close or wanted to do it. it. Really? He, he might do it? Who? Jersey Mike. Yeah, Jersey mean, Mike. That's a menacing-looking yeah, referee, isn't it? it? Yeah. Well, big, I mean, look at, man. look at Beltran. I mean, there's a lot of those guys. Dan Regliata, you don't want to mess with some of these that's cats, true. that's for sure. Um, what were you going to say, Aaron? Go ahead. I was going to say one more thing before I go off. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Before I go off the air, uh, Veronica and I, we have a friendly wager for the fight this weekend on the main event between Shevchenko and Nunes. She likes Shevchenko. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm all about Shevchenko, yes. So, and I, I, I think it's going to be a good competitive fight, and uh, we're trying to decide among the punishment for each other, you know. I mean, uh, we uh, we may leave a junky nation. We don't know yet, but uh, it should be interesting. We're, we're looking forward to the fight this weekend, and uh, – be a good card. I mean, even though it's a, you know, I mean, the women headline kind of gets some. Uh, oh, we lost them. Damn. Yeah, go Shevchenko. I want. I, I'm with Veronica on that one. Go Shevchenko. God, I want to put a pie in that guy's face sometimes. He's soft. <laughs> All right. Uh, but much respect for the fact that he judges and refs. I really love Aaron for that. But this whole, oh, we have this cute fight or this cute little bet and blah blah blah. And we don't know what the loser's gonna do. And I'll put it up to Junkie Nation. At that point in time, I wish Veronica would go. I happen to have a pie right here and just put it in his face. Because that's what I, that's what I would have done if he was sitting right here. Uh, but we enjoyed the call. Thank you. All right, so Danny, uh, our first fighter's ready to go. So, uh, oh, you're telling me she's ready to go. All right, good job. Uh, Tisha Torres is fighting on Friday, and she's fighting Juliana Lima. It should be a great fight. She joins us now on MMA Junkie Radio. Hello, Tisha. How you doing? Hi, guys. I'm doing well. Thank you. All right. Welcome back to MMA Junkie Radio. It's been a couple of years since we had you on the show. A lot has changed in your life. Uh, congratulations on recently getting engaged as well. Thank you. We're very excited. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so let's talk some fighting. It happens on Friday. And yours, you know, I have to believe that I was asked about this. I did another show the other, uh, yesterday as well. Shout out to Sean Lennon from the Fight League Report. We were talking about your fight and what it means. It appears Rose Namajunas may get the next shot at Joanna Yenjacek. However, I believe you're kind of in that next wave of who may fight the winner of that fight should you win. Are you looking at it that way as well? Um, I think I'm definitely one or two wins away from getting a title shot. I mean – been number five now for a while probably the last two years or the in the last year this is number four and then i didn't fight so i just got bumped to number five but um yeah i think that everybody's kind of had that opportunity to fight for the title in the top five except for me yet so i think one or two wins i should be getting that shot myself mm -hmm. another thing uh that was talked about yesterday was you know when we first when i first saw you at invicta i you showed me a lot of resemblances towards Vanderlei Silva. You have incredible hand speed, and you throw some really, really devastating hooks. Um, do your coaches uh, build on your skill set, the one you have, or have they ever tried to, like, straighten your punches as well to complement the, the hooks that you throw? Um, well, I, I actually just um, moved to Colorado, so I'm with a new camp and with Raquel's coaches and stuff so i've been getting a lot of a lot of more one-on-one -on -one attention so i think that my style is just going to be a little bit more evolved this fight although it is only you know i took it on two weeks two and a half weeks notice so but i was still training for that so i feel like with every fight to come it'll just get better and better and i felt that in my last fight because i did a, a month with her camp and then a month with my old camp and i felt really good about it so i'm just excited about um how this fight's going to go, and I really feel like I'm going to show the best version of me yet. If you hadn't had, uh, you know, the changes in your personal life, getting engaged, 
Um, would you have been looking to leave American Top Team and get more of that individual attention anyway? Um, probably not. I, I was happy at American Top Team. I mean, I, I enjoyed it there. I've been there past six years. But, um, you know, sometimes you have to follow your heart, and that's what I did. And I think all around I made a good choice. And who are your new coaches in Colorado? Um, well, they're all Raquel's coaches. We don't really have a gym per se. We kind of train at different gyms because we want to open our own gym. But um, for Coach Juan, Coach Jaco, Jason, uh, Ray, and Guzman, they're all like Olympic. Um, either they've competed themselves before in martial arts or they are in Team USA or with the Olympic Training Center. So they're high-level coaches themselves. So uh, I'm really grateful that we have that individualized attention because I was kind of missing that before. Gotcha. And then what about as far as Florida, sea level, humidity, warm weather, and now getting to a higher altitude in Colorado, a drier air, probably a cleaner air. Uh, what's that been like for your body? I definitely think that it's going to play a difference in this fight. I've already, everybody's always told me I'm a very active fighter and have good cardio, but in my opinion, I feel like it always could be better. So um, I've, I've been living now in Colorado for about like six or seven weeks uh, officially, like not going back and forth. So um, I'd say I kind of had a full camp with it, it Colorado weather. So I'm looking forward to how that will play out in the fight. But in the future, when I'm more acclimated to Colorado weather, I think it's going to be even better. Okay. Tisha Torres joining us here on MMA Junkie Radio. She is fighting on Friday versus Juliana Lima. I mentioned this earlier, uh, but the fights are available across different platforms, including the UFC Fight Pass and FS1. Goes, what do you have for Tisha Torres? Tisha, Colorado is not that far from Nevada. I, I know you spent a little bit of time mm -hmm. at the uh, new training facility that the UFC has built. Uh, what would you think of maybe spending mm -hmm. some time in Vegas? I know uh, both of you guys have been here before, and uh, what did you think of the, the performance center and how maybe that could play a role in some of your training? Um, I wouldn't mind being there. I mean, the, it has everything you need as far as recovery, personal training, like uh, physical therapy and training. I mean, Raquel and the coaches, they saw it for the first time yesterday. I was able to come for the um, retreat, so I saw it previously. But um, it's a really nice facility. I mean, I wish when we have a gym one day, it'll be a mini version of that. You know, being the first fight of the night, in a way, is it good to just kind of get it all over with? Yeah, I, I like actually fighting earlier in the night because it, you do get over with, and I'm a fan of the sport, so I want to see the other girls' fights on the card and some of the other guy fights, so I'm excited about that. Uh, being in Fight Pass, uh, it's a little different. I'd rather, you know, be on TV. It's a little bit easier for my friends and family to watch it, but I understand they want to, you know, sell more Fight Pass and get some exciting fights on there, so I hope that uh, we open up the show with a bang and just, you know, show that women can fight that, fight hard and get it done. I also heard that you're a fan of something else that made me a bigger fan of yours. I heard you're a fan of Chipotle. Is that true? <laughs> I love Chipotle. <laughs> what's your go-to yeah, when I you am. go there? What do you get? Pretend you're at the window. What's the order sound like? I'm, 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 there's no window. It's not a drive through I wish it was a drive through Well, you know what I meant, but, um, like, like that window just, screen. I'm that so, I'm so yeah, I'm so plain. I just get the white rice, uh, chicken, and uh, black meat. But I wish they made queso dip there because queso dip's my favorite. And I asked them, and they said, because you can't make queso from all natural ingredients, that uh, they don't have it there. Oh. Hmm. All right, interesting. Uh, let's see yeah. here. So I have my screen up now, and, yes, you are on the Fight Pass. And the Fight Pass starts at 6 p.m. Eastern time, folks. There's two fights. There's Gray Maynard versus Teruto Ishihara and Juliana Lima versus Tisha Torres. And, Tisha, the last thing I want to ask you was, being that, you know, we're talking about, you know, you have a 4 and one record within the UFC, an 8 and one record overall. You've been through the reality show, so you're very popular. And we're talking about how you could be uh, lining up for a title shot with a win over Juliana Lima after – what appears to be Joanna Janjacek versus Rose Namajunas. So this fight has a lot of stakes. How long did you have to think before accepting a late, uh, late notice fight, uh, knowing that so much was at stake? Um, well, actually, I was waiting for a fight um, since February because I've been wanting a fight, and then I saw that Amanda Rebas got pulled from the fight. Um, so uh, I asked for the fight. I was like, Sean Shelby, can I have that fight, please? I was waiting on. Uh, Michelle Watterson, but um, 
he was saying it would be more like late late um, August, but he wasn't really telling me anything. So um, I just offered to take this fight, and he said, yeah. I mean, at this point, like, if you want to fight one of the big rigs, you know, you you got to beat anybody in there, you know. So um, that's why I want it, because I want to fight. I want to get paid, and I still want to fight Michelle Waters, and I'll still take that in late August if I can, if, you know, I'm okay after this fight. Sorry. Very cool. All right. Well, it's great catching okay. up with you. Uh, thank you very much for the time, as always, and good luck on Friday night at Tough 25 Finale versus Juliana Lima. Okay, thank you so much. You have a good day. All right, you too. All right, folks, that's Tisha Torres. You can follow her on Twitter, at Tisha Torres. You can follow Mark Diakise on uh, Twitter, at Mark, M-A-R-C. I notice a lot of Marks on the other side of the pond go with the C instead of the K. Yeah. And then there's an underscore. Whose side are you on? What do you mean? The K or the C? Oh, I'm a, I'm a K guy. When it comes to John's, I'm on the uh, J-O-H-N side. So John Anik, you and him have a problem? A little. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where was I? Follow. Following on Twitters, yeah. And then Diakise. So I may have misspelled his name, but it's M-A-R-C underscore D-I-A-K-I-E-S-E. And then our next guest is going to be at Follow the Menace. That's Michael Johnson. Um, he'll be joining us here in about five minutes. He gave me the old, I would have come to the studio, but that's... He did that last time, too. That's a little bit of a problem I'm having um, that I don't want to get into right now. But, of course, I would want him in the studio, but it, it just... It's a long story. It is a long story. Yeah, it would have been fun. But uh, thank you to Paige for setting up the Tisha Torres interview. I think what we're going to do is get our last break out of the way, and then we'll be commercial-free all the way home. And I know we won't spend the whole 20 minutes with Michael Johnson. It's fight week. We try and leave them alone, get a couple questions in, and then we bounce. So we'll have time to take your calls at 866-522-2846. Uh, hopefully everybody's enjoying their holiday today, 4th of July. Happy birthday, America. We'll be right back.
They can drink Mentos-flavored Diet Coke without their stomachs giving a single fuck. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Junkie Radio. Sirius XM is now on Amazon Alexa. Just enable the Sirius XM skill. Log on to your account and say, Alexa, listen to MMA Junkie on Sirius XM Rush 93. For more information, visit SiriusXM.com slash Amazon Alexa. So you have to give them the channel you want, like uh, First Wave, Channel 33, Sirius XM Rush, Channel 93. Alexa will take you there. All right, we're joined now by one of the headliners for Tough 25 finale. Goes by the name of Michael Johnson on Twitter, at Follow the Menace. He's taking on Justin Gagey. He's the welcoming committee to Justin Gagey, who's debuting uh, in the Ultimate Fighting Championship. It Give should him a be title. an awesome fight. Excuse me, who? Give him a title. Introduce him as one of the in the UFC. Go. Fastest fighters I've ever seen in the UFC. One of the best footwork guys oh, in yeah. the UFC. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll give him that one, too. Uh, Michael Johnson joining us here on MMA Junkie Radio. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good, good, man. I'm doing great, man. How you guys doing today? We're doing s excellent. Uh Thank you for offering, uh, you know, to being able to come to the studio, and, and maybe that's something we could have pressed on a little bit more, but the athletes uh, most of the time are, are just kind of, I guess, staying, you know, you guys have so many things going on, and uh, we didn't even know it was a possibility. Yeah, of course, man. You know, I always got time to, to stop in the studio and say what's up to you guys. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. Thank you. I always find time if I don't. You know nah, yeah. You know, I, I'll give it up for you, man. You you have always been really good. You've come to the studio many <laughs> times. You've co-hosted shows, not just done a quick 15-minute spot. You've actually stayed for the whole two hours. And then, hell, you almost brokered saving uh, UFC, what was it, 209 or something like that here in our studio right. as well, 210, yeah. I think. That was intense, we wasn't tried. it? It was, yeah. yeah. He was texting UFC President Dana White, and it almost went down. And that that day, I had listeners send me uh, messages that said, like, I, I was it was time for my lunch break, but I couldn't leave because I didn't want to be I wouldn't be the guy that missed when that announcement came. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here you are fighting Justin Gagey. Uh, you know, I know that a lot of fighters don't like to engage in the verbal wel- uh, warfare, but I tell you what, you guys have made it pretty fun, man. I. Anytime you guys are tweeting, I'm checking it out just to see if you guys are getting into it again. Yeah, I, I know, man. And you know, I'm not one for that. But this, uh, he's fucking talking too much. Like, who the fuck are you? Like, like you, you just came into the UFC, established yourself for a little bit. Like, yeah, you're tough. You're the champ in World Series. Like, you're undefeated. I get it. But, um, you know, don't don't come in here like running your mouth like you're this like big badass. Like, you're really gonna come in and make a big wave into the real fighting game, you know, so it, it just kind of bothers me. You you know, you guys, like I said, you guys know me, and I'm not one to talk shit quite a bit, but, um, you know, it just really irks me a little bit. You know, it's kind of disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I thought was interesting was, it, I think this happened in, in L.A., you sensed that he was nervous because his lip was quivering when you guys were up close? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was quivering. I remember like it was like like it was ten degrees outside in the place. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't he couldn't stop stitching him with his belt every time. You know the, those are nervous twitches to me. Those those are signs of this guy's nervous. He's gonna try to talk himself into this fight. He's trying to talk himself up so much. Uh-huh. If you guys watch the video, you look at my face, man. I might be talking a little bit back, but man, I'm calm. I'm cool. I'm, I'm looking right at him. With uh, you can say whatever you want, but I see it. You know, I see it in you. I see it when I look in his eyes. I, you know, I can see the, the nervousness of him trying to talk himself into it. And he's underestimating me as well. So, What what kind of nerves do you think they are? Because I, I believe that at your guys' level, you're pretty much not scared of another man. Is it just uh, scared of the trash talk or the fact that there's cameras there or the fact that you might get punked with a slap? You know, like, are, are there other types of nerves? Yeah, or, I, or, you, or you think those are competition nerves of the upcoming fight on Friday? Uh, you know, his might be a little competition nerves. It might be that he's not used to the spotlight that he's getting. You know, he's not used to these media days and uh, and, and all the reporters, you know, talking to him, having his face off on stage. And, um, yeah, and he might be nervous that I might, you know, try to smack him. But, you know, I don't think he 
scared of me. He's not scared of me by any means. You know, I'm not saying that. You know, maybe he was thinking like, man, he might try to push me or smack me or something like that. So I might be me getting a little nervous. But yeah. at the same time, I just think um, it's a big stage for him. And, uh, you know, his nerves are really eating at him. Because I can't lie, man. If I was on that stage, obviously if I'm there, I'm a badass. But then when I'm there, I feel like there's that whole other game of just not getting punked, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think I'd be a fidgeter and a quiver or whatever to the point where I'd probably – I think those guys that react – just want to get something out of the way. And so when the bodies come in contact with each other or close, I think I'd be one of those like, Pah! you know, <laughs> like a slap or a push or just something so that I, so that the tension goes away. You know, I, I really do respect the ones that can uh, can do it and not flinch. I saw one the other day. It was a good one. Uh, the all-time greatest was check out Mike Tyson at a boxing event. He walks up to Floyd Mayweather and mm. actually acts like he's going to sock him. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he, Floyd was so calm. He didn't, flinch, right? he didn't flinch. He just laughed it off. And I'm thinking, holy cow, how good do you know this guy to know that he was going to stop within an inch of your face and he's one of the most deadliest people ever. <laughs> but the other day there was yeah, another another yeah. good one in MMA too where, where somebody didn't flinch. I think it was Cody and TJ again. And mm. TJ just the stood show? there. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, man, you, you got to be you know, a master at that shit. Dustin, he didn't flinch either. I jumped at Dustin on, on Williams, and he didn't flinch either. Damn. Now, when I see somebody that doesn't flinch or jump back, that's a good sign for me. You know, that, that sign, that, that's them telling me that they're not ready. Uh -huh. They're not ready to react or, or get punched or something like that. If somebody flinches, then that means they're paying attention in there. They might not be scared, but, you know, they can see that they might be getting hit and they're, they're going to move back and, and come back with something. Oh, and wow. There's no winning with, with this guy. You know? I didn't uh, – yeah, I, I didn't understand. Okay. <laughs> you're, first of all, you're talking about Dustin Poirier, right? Well, I'm just – I was just comparing things. You guys are bringing stories up where guys weren't flinching. So I, I brought that story where right. I uh, What, what he says makes sense. I, I thought he said Justin at the way. No, I go, wait Justin. a minute. They've already weighed in, but then he said Dustin. Okay. So if they uh, do flinch, yeah. it means they're in fight mode and they're ready. That's their reaction. Yeah, that caught me off yeah, guard. Yeah, I, yeah, I would have yeah, interpreted yeah, it another way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I interpreted You know, I had a talk. You, you know, I just talked to very wise people that have been in the fight game for a while. And, you know, uh, a guy said that to me and it really stuck out to me. Like, wow, you know what? You're right. This guy didn't flinch. He was getting hit. You know what I mean? Like, he's hit already. If he's not flinching, you might not be scared of it, but you just got punched in your face. But if I'm flinching, then I'm, you know, you, you're probably going to miss and then get back. Damn. Yeah. Nerds all over the world, world are rejoicing right now. <laughs> you see, I was ready the whole time. <laughs> you know what's the worst thing that's ever made me flinch huh? in public? Oh, I know. What? Well, I don't know about yours. I don't mind. Go what, ahead. What's yours? When I'm driving. Uh huh. And there's something coming towards the windshield. It could be like a feather. Mm -hmm. But even though you're going so fast, you still kind of go, eh, when it hits the windshield, you know it's not going to hit you. Right. Well, I was walking once, and I got a, I got a cramp in my neck. <laughs> and it was because I was walking the dog, and I went through a spider web. And I went, <laughs> yeah! you know, like Tomcat almost. Uh -huh. I mean, I yelled, but I flinched, and I went back. And I, oh, man, I, I spider hate spiders, and I hate spider webs. Yeah, that would make me flinch. I hate <laughs> spider webs. Yeah, and I just remember doing it and then going, oh, man, I got a kink in my neck. I was fucked up. I looked like a fool. <laughs> if anybody was you out YouTube I mean, on that day, they that shit went viral, man, because I looked like an idiot. My belly was flopping. My shirt went up. I looked like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I walk through a spider web, I think of uh, the beginner of the movie Ray. You guys oh, watched yeah. that? Yeah, that's a good movie. He walked through the, through the spider web as a kid, and I don't know if that's how he really went blind in real life, but that like something got in his eye, like the web got caught in his eye or something. No, wow, so I, 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 I don't know if that's the true story, but that's what it says in the movie. <laughs> huh, we'll have to check that out. All right. Well, listen, so you're headlining uh, on Friday. Cannot wait for this fight. I mean, seriously, um, the trash talk is definitely authentic. And, uh, I, you know, whoever wins this, because you have them wins, and I know that the, the Khabib loss hurt you a little bit, but you still have the Ferguson win. You still have the Barbosa win. So you're always going to be a player in this game, Michael Johnson. So go out there, do your thing. Good luck to you. Uh, Gagey's a quality opponent. This is a huge win for either for either guy. Yeah, yeah, he, he's a very tough guy, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to coming in here and making a statement. You know, right. Like you said, um, I do have a very strong case, and I'm willing to – in here and take that title.
Well, I'm sorry. It sounded like Ghost <laughs> wanted to say a question or two, and I, I may already be. You're okay. Are you okay on time, or you have something lined up already? I'm good. Okay, your schedule's good. All right, uh, Ghost, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, I had a couple questions All for right. him. Yeah. Uh, Michael, so the one thing we were talking about when we were breaking down this fight was because you're in the main event, do you feel you're one of the smarter fighters, but do you feel like maybe that's a little pressure to get wrapped up into what Justin does, that type of game of just – going out there and throwing and banging? No, absolutely not. Uh, and, you know, I'm too intelligent in this fight game. Um, I don't need to go in there and get my head beat on and, and come out with, with closed eyes and all fucked up. You know, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, have a career after this as well. So I don't get hit a lot in my fights. So I'm just going to go out here and focus on my game. Um, I know his game. I know his strengths. I know his weaknesses. And I'm going to just let him focus on what he needs to do. And um, I need to focus on what I need to do, and that's uh, plain and simple. You know, I think he's, um, I think he's getting caught up and thinking about me. <laughs> and, um, you had made a comment about where Justin comes. You know, I think it was something like a, a C League comment, and I was thinking about, can that comment hurt you in the long run when people say, "All right, he got the win." But he got it over the guy that he said came from a C League. Like, in other words, <laughs> is, is it going to hurt you a little bit if you do get that victory in the long run? Uh, no, not at all. It doesn't hurt me because, uh, the people hear that and they, they might laugh it off. But when it comes down to it, um, he's undefeated. He's a champion. Um, he's beaten very tough guys, but, um, it's just obvious, you know, the guys that he's beaten, like they don't come close to the competition that I face. They don't come close to the competition that's in the UFC. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he has been in a, in a smaller promotion, but, um, like I said, man, it's a fight game. You know what I mean? We're all tough. We're all good. Um, he's been doing this for quite some time, but his downfall is going to be that he hasn't faced a fighter like me, and he's underestimated. He thinks he's unstoppable, and he thinks he's indestructible, and that's the wrong attitude to have when you're walking into a fight, especially with one of the best lightweights in the world. I can't wait to see you guys you trade uh, the, the kicks as well. Um, I know you've learned a lot from Henry's system. And Justin, he'll tell you, he'll be the first to tell you he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, but his leg kicks have been pretty debilitating towards others. Um, but you know that's, that's something good you guys. That he doesn't know what he's doing because I'm gonna I'm gonna show him exactly how to how to do it. You know I think he's been getting away. He's been getting away with a very sloppy style. You know he's very aggressive and he breaks guys. Mm -hmm. You know I will give him that. He breaks these guys in World Series, but um, I'm not that easy to break. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm, Khabib, Khabib got at me, you know, but he's a different animal. Nate got the best of me, but, I mean, these are guys that have 20-plus experience. You know, I've only been in this game for nine years or so, so. Hey, one last thing here. Speaking of leg kicks, I know Chandler's a teammate of yours. The kick that he took, Henry was in his corner. Is that something you all came back and studied? Because, obviously, that's – different type of damage than we've seen where, where before it'll hobble someone, it'll slow someone down, make them switch their stances. But in this case, Chandler lost the function of his foot. Yeah, that's um, that's a different scenario. You know, I don't – I just think it has to do with um, maybe his, his bones or something or maybe just, you know, he got hit in the wrong place. I wouldn't say that guy, like, purposely did that like he was saying it. You, you know, I mean, he, he kicked him and he injured his foot. But, um, you know, I think that was just maybe, you know, Chandler needs to take more care of his body and, and make sure he's healing right and, and practicing and get through right. You know, like he's, a, he's a great competitor and um, he usually stays healthy. So I just think that was a freak accident. Gotcha. And he still pushed. And I still think he could have won that fight if they didn't stop it, which they shouldn't have stopped it anyway. You don't think so? Like, I mean, his foot – no, I, I don't. I don't think they should. I mean, it's an injury. You can't stop and take a timeout and and check to see. I like. I don't think so. Especially yeah, the, the, the handling there. of it was the and handling never, bit was not right. I, I agree there. Yeah, like he never he never like backed up. He never gave up. He he never said I I stop. I don't want to fight anymore. You know he um he almost knocked him out off of one foot. You can't really stop the fight. Plus, I don't know if you guys saw the commission. <laughs> pull the chair from under him oh. when he was sitting back down. 
Yeah, definitely. We did see that, man. It was it was crazy out there. All right, brother. We got to get going. But thank you so much for doing the show. As always, folks, follow him on Twitter at Follow the Menace. He fights Justin Gaethje on Friday night. Tough 25 finale, Fox Sports 1. Thanks, Michael, for the time as always. Take care, man. Fine. Thank you, guys. All right. We'll see you. All right, folks. That's the end of the show. Thank you again to Paige from the UFC for lining up the Johnson interview, the DKSA interview, and Torres. We'll be back tomorrow with Anthony Pettis and Curtis Blades. For Danny and Goes, I'm George. Go out there and be a champion for crying out loud. Happy birthday, America. A fortune won and lost on every deal. All you need is stone hard and a new steel. Viva Las Vegas.